Uh, good morning, everyone. I praise God for giving me this privilege to, uh, to spend time with my brothers and sisters, fellow colleagues, uh, working together in the vineyard of the Lord. I really praise God. On Monday, we, we saw Jesus as our ladder. We saw Jesus as our ladder, dependable, holding us, helping us reach greater heights, our ladder, not only our ladder, but our true leader. On Wednesday, we had the opportunity to look at the differences between character and reputation. And we saw close up in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, how Jesus gave priority to character and not really for reputation because reputation is temporary. In fact, he made himself of no reputation for our salvation. I praise God. We are what we are today because of Jesus, because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our all in all. Today, let us look at teamwork. And we all know this, this statement that is on the screen for us. We are all aware the this acronym. Together, everyone achieves more. It was reported from uh, the Second World War, that uh, during the Second World War, soldiers were sent individually to the enemy camp to look for weak spots for the army to break through. And uh, when the soldiers were sent individually, they did not fulfill their commission as expected because these soldiers who went individually were fearful, were intimidated, discouraged. But the same soldiers, same men, when they were put in a team, were courageous, brave, and they exhibited a, a spirit of uh, heroism. Same people in a team. I praise God. The leadership for this universe is a team. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit working as a team, unbroken team. What perfect unity we see there. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where there is no counsel, the people fall, failure. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. We praise God. When, when there is teamwork, there is wisdom. There is support. There is unity. And so teamwork is essential as we work together. Ellen White in, uh, in the book Evangelism, page 73 and paragraph one. She makes this, this uh, statement very powerful. God never designed that as a rule, his servants should go out singly to labor. In these days, in this 21st century, where individualism matters, and we say, this is my PC, my personal computer, my mobile phone. One point of time, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we had one phone for the whole family. Today, we have our personal phones, personal mobiles. We thank God for technology, but God wants us to work together as a family, 
as an institution, as a church, as the body of believers. And Ellen White explains that statement. She says, to illustrate, here are two brothers. They are not of the same temperament. Their minds do not run in the same channel. One is in the danger of doing too much. The other fails to carry the burdens that he should. If associated together, these might have a molding influence upon each other. So that the extremes in their characters would not stand out so prominently in their labors. It might not be necessary for them to be together in every meeting, but they could labor in places 10, 15, or even 30 miles apart, near enough together, however, so that if one came to a crisis in his labors, he could call on the other for assistance. They should also come together as often as possible for prayer and consultation. This is God's plan, working together. I was so impressed with that phrase in the, on the fourth line there, each one having a molding influence upon, upon each other. A molding, a sanctifying influence upon each other so that we both, we, the all in the team can grow together, strengthen each other, complement each other. I praise God. Some leadership experts, they call this team chemistry. Team chemistry is a strong mutual attraction or attachment or sympathy or interaction between people working together so that we all benefit together. We all reach the goal together. We all grow together and we all fulfill God's plans together as a team as well as individually. We fulfill God's plan in our individual personal lives. I praise God. We are in this great controversy. Yes, this battle that started in heaven is raging because the enemy knows his time is short. And I praise God, it's coming to an end. And I believe with all my heart in our lifetime. And so Satan knows his time is short and he works with determination deception and his plans are subtle he works with well matured plans skillful movements and in this in this great controversy we cannot face the enemy alone we need one another we need one another as the human family and we need the support and the strength of the heavenly family. And I praise God. I praise God that God has the whole team of heaven with us in this, in this great controversy. I want us to look at just a few examples as we close. Noah, a team player. I see team, team leadership, teamwork within that family three sons and their wives, Noah and his wife, team leadership. I also see Ellen White tells us of Methuselah. Methuselah was uh, also encouraged Noah in building that ark. An old man, Methuselah, with all that experience, over that 969 years relationship with God, strengthening Noah to fulfill God's plans, teamwork. We see in the life of Abraham, teamwork in the family, among brothers with Lot and uh, the team of uh, house, the whole household, 
Abraham a team player. We see Paul, one of the best examples in the New Testament. Paul always, he was not a, a solo player, was a team player. We see in his epistles, in every epistle, when he begins and more so when he ends that epistle, those names, Priscilla and Aquila, Timothy, Titus, Fortunatus, Achaicus, many names. Paul was a team player. I praise God. He accomplished much. God accomplished much through him. I see a, a beautiful teamwork between these two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, two minor prophets. And uh, if you notice the age difference, Haggai, an old man, towards the end of his life. Zechariah, a young man. Teamwork between the young and the old. Between the inexperienced and the experienced. Working together. And the older ones starting, laying the foundation, planting seeds, while the younger ones coming behind to reap the harvest. We praise God and the best example. You and I know your Savior and my Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. He loved the disciples, the 12 with him, 70 with him, 120 with him. Jesus, a great team player. He focused on training people. He treated them the best and expected the best from them. Today, yes, we have big institutions, great uh, organization, and uh, efficient policies. But people are our main business, students. And so there is a need for us to be a team working, developing meaningful relationships where we are facilitating, nurturing, reaching the common goal. And so God wants us to use love to educate and uh, uh, to impart values. It is my prayer that we all will work together as a team, strengthening one another, forgiving one another, helping one another so that we will all together reach the goal. May God bless us.